A week or two ago, uh, I had the pleasure of putting on a bird photography workshop for Olympus. Um, check out getolympus.com to let people try out their uh, wonderful, wonderful OMD cameras. We brought in some captive raptors and we're going to shoot in a park. Um, but if you've been following the news in Austin, you know that it's been raining. So uh, one thing we shot in the studio and we had a backdrop and we kind of changed it up a little bit, but I like this shot, but I wanted it to be a different color background. So I want to show you real quick how in Capture One you can go about rearranging the background. Naively, you could just shift the white balance of the entire photo. And because the background is kind of a gray color, we can make it blue. We can make it way more orange. But of course, the bird changes with it. Um, so that really isn't what we want to accomplish. Luckily, Capture One has local adjustments, and they work really, really well for stuff like this, especially in Capture One 11 now that we have Refine uh, Mask available. So I'm going to use a brush, and I'm going to use it with uh, Auto Masking turned on, and kind of color over the, the bird. And the masking is not going to be great. You're going to see um, it, it's going to go outside the bird a lot. We're going to get a lot of artifacts. Uh, it's one of the side drawbacks of auto masking in Capture One. Um, my computer is being laggy because while I record, it's, it's working harder than it wants to. Um, and the auto masking takes a little bit of processing time. So I'm just kind of roughing this mask in. Uh, and I'm masking the bird. You could mask the background and change its color, or you could mask the bird, which is what I chose to do, and change the entire white balance of the photo and then fix the bird via its layer. And it really doesn't matter which one you do, they both will work. So for a lot of shapes, I find it's easier to, to overdraw them um, and then come back and fix them with the erase brush. For whatever reason, convex shapes, that is curves that go to the outside, like the top of the, the, this red-tailed hawk's head, are easier for me to trace from the outside. And Capture One's uh, auto um, edging works better in sometimes this way than it does the other way. It doesn't work great either way, um, to be honest, which is why I'm so excited about having Refine available. So I'm just gonna go around and kind of roughly clean this up. And you can see there's some artifacts on the bill. It looks like I'm not doing anything, but that's mostly because my computer is lagging due to the recording going on. So I'm gonna pause here for a second. It'll clean that edge up. So this mask is not perfect by any means. You can see there are lots and lots of places where I bleed onto the background or where the background bleeds in, but we're gonna use Refine Mask. We'll let that clean up the mask for us. Now this radius tells Capture One how wide an area to search for an edge, and then try to make that edge sort of a true smooth transition or a, a clean transition, smooth is not the right word. And the size of the radius you use is, is just a matter of experimentation. And you'll see as it previews this, there's still a little bit of a defect down there on the, the bird's shoulder, uh, on its back sort of, around its, its beak. But it cleaned up a lot of it. So now we're gonna iterate. We're gonna go back and we're gonna just kinda clean up a few spots carefully. And I also try, I try not to obsess about getting the mask perfect. It, what I care about is that the final result looks good. And because I can see the results as I go along, I can decide when I'm when I'm happy and stop messing with it. Because my goal is to take photos, not spend all my time in front of a computer. You can see here underneath his beak is an area of head trouble, so I'm gonna make a, myself a real small brush and I could zoom way in, but I'm not being super careful there. Um, in this case, Automask did a reasonable job and we're gonna do another round of uh, we're finding that mask now that we've got it much closer. And 
because the the mask is much closer to correct I feel like I can get away with a little bit lower um, search size and you can see like on the feathers behind the bird's head on the left side you know it's masking those feathers pretty precisely So again, we're going to adjust the background. Uh, I could invert this mask now, or I could have created it on the background, but I'm doing this kind of backwards, most people consider. There's no reason to do it that way or not do it that way. It doesn't actually matter. You can see that the mask layer uh, white balance is set to off, which means it's not adjusting the difference in white balance between that layer and the background at all. So if I now adjust the white balance of the bird only, how to make the bird look a different color. And, you know, at first pass, this mask looks pretty good. Um, so we can go back and forth now. Because I chose to mask the bird, make the bird the layer, adjustment layer, it's kind of a push and pull thing. Um, so in reality, it might have been better to do it the other way around. But it's still not hard. Um, I just tweak the background to make it look the way I want and then adjust the bird layer to get the results I want. So I'm not sure there's an official term for this. I call it differential editing, where I edit two parts of the picture in a very different way. Um, and it relies on having a very clean mask because Capture One now has refined that allows us to actually do that. Whereas before I would have had to drop out to something like Affinity and create mask there. And then I'm working with either I'm working from JPEGs, which I can't really adjust as much, or I'm adjusting, I'm creating variants of the photo in of Capture One and adjusting them for each area of the photo without masking, just doing two different versions, one for the bird, one for the background, and then putting those two together in Affinity. And that's not hard, but it's way more time consuming than what I'm doing right here. So let's look at where we're at. So I'm just going to create a, a new variant of this, which means no adjustments. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of how you can go about doing things like changing a background color uh, without falling back to a pixel editor like Photoshop or Affinity.